The experiments we do here at Lance are diverse and very exciting. With our five different experimental areas, we can cover from fundamental science to applied national security science. That diversity is very impressive and unique for the nation. Lance was built in 1972. Uh, at the time, it was a one megawatt proton linear accelerator. Even today, 45 years later, it is still one of the most powerful accelerators in the world. So the accelerator can be broken up into three main sections. There's the front end injector section. It's a Cockcroft Walton accelerator. It brings the beam up to 750 keV. Then we have a drift tube LINAC that brings the beam up to 100 MeV. And finally, we have a, uh, the remaining section, which is a, a side coupled cavity LINAC that brings the beam up to the full 800 MeV. Um, we can bring up to uh, a milliamp of beam, so it's 800 kilowatts of beam power, but typically we run at about 80 kilowatts, and we can pr provide a couple of different beams simultaneously to the various different user programs. The problem for Los Alamos National Laboratory and for the country that we are working on at Lance has to do with the safety and surety of the nuclear weapon stockpile. One of the more important things in terms of the safety of a nuclear weapon is replacing normal high explosives, which is called sensitive high explosives, with insensitive high explosives. So that when you drop the, the weapon, the explosives don't go off. With the proton radiography facility, we can ignite the high explosives and watch how it burns on time scales of about hundreds of a millionth of a second. One of the amazing things that happens when something blows up is, say you put a piece of metal next to a piece of high explosives and you drive a shockwave through that metal, all right? Well, as the shockwave moves through the metal, when it reaches the far surface, it's gonna bounce off. And when it bounces off, that metal will go into tension. Instead of being compressed, it gets stretched. And it might be stretched so much that it fails. That's called spallation. And the top surface can just pop right off. And we can make a movie of that process and happening, and we can actually see that top surface ringing like a bell as it pops off and flies off into space on its own. Something that I don't know any other way to, to answer questions about how materials behave in situations like that other than proton radiography. In addition to that, we have facilities where uh, airplane companies uh, bring their electronics, the avionics, the things that keep your airplane flying. Uh, when, when you're in the sky. And it turns out there's cosmic rays that come in from the rest of the galaxy and they bombard these electronics. And you want to make sure that when these cosmic rays bombard the electronics, they don't cause the electronics to stop working. And so they bring the electronics here, they put them in the neutron beam, which is about a million times more intense than the cosmic rays that the electronics are exposed to in an airplane, and they ensure that the electronics will work in that beam. The applications we're working on now are testing the semiconductor devices for high energy neutrons. In the future, we're looking towards using protons to test uh, for uh, failures for in space applications where protons are a problem. And we're also thinking of, or we're also engaged in testing devices for thermal neutrons. In addition to that, we make radioisotopes in a facility known as the Isotope Production Facility. As part of the National DOE Isotope Program, we make isotopes that otherwise would be in short supply. And so we fill a very important niche within the nation to supply mostly critical medical isotopes for cardiac imaging. So right now, our main isotopes are strontium-82 and germanium-68. Both of these isotopes are used for medical imaging. They're both used for positron emission tomography, or PET imaging. So the strontium-82 is useful for cardiac patients, and germanium-68 is useful for imaging a variety of different cancers and other diseases. Since the beginning, Lance has always been a national user facility. Over the past year, we've had over 500 users come here from around the country and around the world. And so that brings a, a whole new kind of texture to the laboratory, where you have external people coming, you form collaborations, you sometimes uh, students or postdocs come, and, and you end up recruiting them into the laboratory. So it's been a critical part of Lance since the beginning, and I think it will continue to be an important uh, component as, as we go forward. The nation is desperate 
for folks in science, technology, engineering, and math. Lance is a facility that not only attracts the next generation into the science and technology fields, but it delivers for the nation.